we're scrambling just a tiny bit. Not really scrambling. It's going okay, isn't it, Jill? <laughs> it is going great. And we're three minutes ahead of time. So yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. The other <laughs> platform crapped out on us or yeah, Jill wasn't able to get on for some reason. So we quickly switched to Zoom. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zoom is a reliable platform for both of us. So, so here mm -hmm. we are. <laughs> it's it's good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Really good. <laughs> yeah. You were just telling me that you moved to Seashelt. Uh, well, we're on the Sunshine Coast. We're Sunshine actually, Coast, sorry. Okay. Yeah, where it's considered Roberts Creek, but it's just on the outskirts of Gibson's. So, okay. and Chris is working in Seashelt, so he's doing that drive every day. Oh, neat. Yeah. How are you enjoying it? How, how do you like being uh, here? Couldn't be happier. Yeah. I, I feel every day, I, every window I work, I look out in our place, all I see is trees. So just before I got on the call with you, I was out in the yard um, planting some herbs and uh, checking on my garden. My uh, landlord built me a raised bed garden. Oh, nice. And then, uh, yeah, and then discovering, I mean, it's five acres. I mean, it, we're, we're just, and there's two houses on it, ours and the landlord's. And there's little areas in the yard that we care for. I found a big patch of chicks and hens, you know, mm. the little, um, plants that grow no matter what you do to them you can stick them on a rock and they'll find a way to grow <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> cool the succulents yeah so yeah. yeah I'm I'm loving it yeah right on good for you mm -hmm. well for a, a, a spiritual person it sounds like a great <laughs> location yes. to be in yeah. yeah um one of the things you know that I love this about you is that you are a self proclaimed spiritual badass so <laughs> it begs the question just as a way of introduction maybe you could tell people sure. what you do yeah so you know I, I, I consider myself an, a continually evolving human so the spiritual badass uh, moniker came out of the idea that um, when someone is willing to just go all in in this lifetime and uh, choose to be deeply connected spiritually as well as fully grounded in the human experience, that makes you a badass. So <laughs> that's kind of where that all came from. And then I work with people, I'm mostly with women, I'm around healing any uh, trauma, on sorting out their lives. You know, it was interesting I had a conversation with somebody the other day and to kind of bring it all down to what really happens with myself and clients is they'll come to me with something in their lives that's creating angst, disruption, and they know that something has to change. But sometimes those really big, massive changes, it's so hard to do, but there's a voice in their head that says, I know this has to change, but then bringing that into reality needs support. So I'm walking them through from that place of like, this is awful and how am I gonna survive it? And if I do this, my world will fall apart to the other side of like, holy, my whole life has changed when I took the courageous steps over this period of time to let that go and move into the next thing. So it's very gratifying work. <laughs> yeah. And I think some of that badassery comes about uh, as a result of just being willing to, from our conversation before, it, encouraging people to just tell the truth and 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 maybe you're just, um, yeah, you're just all about telling telling the truth, which is absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. and and interesting, you know, we, it kind of connected to the whole being an evolutionary human and really on that track is even that evolves, you know, like I, I, the, the purity of telling the truth is absolutely there in that. And then there's all of this room and this grace and this compassion and the space for understanding that sometimes we don't even know the truth for ourselves. Mm. So, you know, it's telling the truth, but it's also finding the truth and, and, um, pulling the fibers apart so you find the real core of that truth within yourself and then living that you know as best you can for what's happening in that moment hmm. yeah. i love the idea that we're evolving spiritually you know like I, I think maybe at one point in my life i thought that my belief system and all that kind of stuff was going to be pretty fixed i was you know 
this type of a Christian and I was going to be that type of a Christian forever. <laughs> and right? that along, you know, not, not by any, I didn't go out seeking change. It just, it just happened. And I mm -hmm. think it happens as we get, get older anyways, we kind of get more contemplative and, and yeah. you know, the way we see the world keeps changing and we have more experiences. And so, yeah, to think that it, to ever think that it's just going to be fixed is, uh, yeah, it, it, it unfortunately it it blocks you from so much of what I believe we're mm. here for. So yeah. you know, like um, I think that we should question everything all the time. And honestly, the deeper your faith, the more you should question, mm -hmm. because it opens up all of these layers and layers and layers. And yeah, so. I, I've heard many old saints say they they aren't they aren't as fixed as they used to be. They have more questions than they they did before. You know, so mm -hmm. I love that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what impact has uh, COVID nineteen had on on what you do? <laughs> this pandemic. Yeah, you know, I'm not honestly. I would say I'm probably one of the lucky ones in that. Um, no matter what happens to be going on in the world, um, people are still seeking um, and, and maybe even more so in this time. Mm. What it has done though for me, um, it, it, it has made me more um, contemplative for sure. It's had me asking questions around what is this and what's it doing here. It's also um, solidified some of the things that I believe and have believed for a while that are going on planetarily, spiritually, the big picture, all of that kind of thing. Have, it's almost given me like, okay, this is, this makes even more sense now. So, um, and then it has, you know, moved my business a little bit. I'm doing um, a program now that I never considered really, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I've considered doing small group programs online before, and um, when I've tried to, it, there's, there's not been, it's almost like I'm a little off with it. So it doesn't work quite as the way I wanted it to. But with this happening, um, there's a real ache and a real call for people that I've found to go inward and to really remember that deep inner wisdom that they have. And so I'm leading these programs now. Um, I had one call where I led a guided visualization and healing and out of that I have um, six women uh, in one group and five with one open spot left in another group very quickly so it's really I think purifying what people do it's an this is a time of an invitation of you can't do the thing that you've been doing and hating anyway so find the thing that you love yeah yeah. Yeah. Isn't, don't you see a lot of that going on? I mean, I want to add, my next question is about, well, no, I won't go to that yet. But um, yeah, there's a lot of people I think are questioning that like they're off work. So it, you know, what's, what's surfing, what's surfacing is do when this is over, do I really want to go back to that? Or can I in 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, you know, pivot, the, the word pivots coming up a lot, especially with my, friends who are in business and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. personally, what helps you to ground yourself during times like this? I was thinking this morning on my walk, actually, you know, the saying that we have a saying in business, you know, dig the well before you need it. <laughs> I <laughs> yep. was thinking practice the practices before you need them. <laughs> like yep. what helps you to, what helps you to relieve, relieve stress and stay grounded? Yeah, it's exactly what I was going to speak into Rod is that, I've been doing this stuff for a long time now. And um, this is the time when it serves us. The whole, um, I mean, you know, I, I came into this um, work and the way I live my life now um, at the end of 2012. Wow, it's a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from the very beginning, when it just, it completely pulled the rug out from underneath of my life and had me face down on the floor for a long time, my mantra was always trust and surrender. And, mm -hmm. and I really didn't know what that meant back then. I, I mean, I look back at it now and I think I thought I knew what that meant, but I had no idea what that meant. And it has been the constant mantra for me 
for this entire time. It's the thing that I keep coming back to, coming back to, coming back to. And now in this time, I see what I've been prepared for mm. because it's really been a matter of just trusting what's happening right in front of me, surrendering to it, and then doing what I know to do. So come, dropping into meditation, getting my hands uh, and my feet on the earth, um, being in conversation with people that are willing to open up these ideas. That's a big deal for me. And then, you know, the stuff I love, I love to cook. I cook, I cooking all the time over here. I'm making bread, you know, those really grounded um, pieces as well. And kitchen dances are always good too. <laughs> good. Yeah, I'm just going to fix my blinds here. Just a second. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <laughs> I made it so um, I can't see myself. So if it looks all wonky, you'll have to tell me. Oh, no, your lighting is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, wow. Trust and surrender. Yeah. Could, could you just say a little bit more about that? Like, what yeah. does that, I mean, you could probably talk for a long time yeah. <laughs> about that, but give us the Coles Notes version of sure. trust and surrender. What a couple of powerful words. Yeah, you know, like I said in the beginning, I didn't really get it. There, I, what I find, and you know, you you know this too, everything is so multi-layered. What you'll understand intellectually in the beginning, eventually you start to have a visceral experience of it, and then it just becomes who you are. So, you know, we're we're in the springtime right now, which means we're planting things, and I haven't had a garden for many many years. And the other day I put carrot seeds under the dirt. Well, it's going to be a long time before I see anything come out of that ground. But in the meantime, I go out there every day and I water it and I just keep trusting and letting go that the, that the water and the sun and the seeds and the soil that they're planted in are going to bear fruit, that it's going to show up as something. And that's exactly what it's like when we get into the whole idea of trusting and surrendering. You may not have an experience of, the, of that bearing fruit for you for a while. But I'll tell you, man, when it does, wow, it, it's, it's really, really powerful. I really um, believe that we have a very limited capacity in the human form to understand what's possible. We can, we can only really, and I can relate this to when I first started doing, um, I was in the car business for over 20 years. And when I got that job, it was a job that I didn't have any idea existed. Like no idea, no concept of it, the possibility of it, right? But it existed out there. So with trust and surrender for me, it's about really getting that I have no idea what's really available that is best for me. So I'm going to state that this is what I want, and then I'm going to hand it over and, and really trust and surrender to the idea that not just that will come, but something that is truly meant to keep, like to bring me uh, closer and closer and more and more in alignment with the path I'm here for, that God will take care of it, that there's no, I don't need to, I just need to keep showing up, following direction. You know, um, do you want me to give you an example recently of that? That'd be great. Yeah. So um, I stated two years ago that we were going to be here April 1st of this year. I don't know how it was going to work for me. I, if I'd have been single, I'd have been here right then. But I'm in a relationship with this absolutely amazing human being. And so um, we were going to work it out. And even, you know, a year in, I'm like, I'm going no matter what. So you're going to need to work it out. <laughs> how this is going to work, right? So in February, uh, he came over here and had a job interview. And they said this was, you know, yeah, they loved him. And he told them how much he need, they needed to make and everything was great. And so I immediately being the fiery Leo that I am went and found us a place to live. And I was, we were gonna get it handled. I had like two days later, we were supposed to sign on this place to rent. And the offer came back way shy of what he needed to make. So I had, and this house, like, 
I could not have drawn you a more perfect home for us that I thought it had a wood burning fireplace. It had a, a, a shed full of old aged wood that would have lasted us three years, had a kitchen with a gas stove. The back, this is so ridiculous, Rod. That had a backyard that went into a forest that was part of the property that he owned that when you walk down the trail took you to a watering hole in the summer. Like, I mean, it was just, it was, it was crazy how perfect this place was. So I just, I, I said, I'm sorry, but I don't know what's going to happen now. And then I had a, a little while of like, I so desperately wanted that house. And I, and I, then I went back to my practice, trust and surrender, let it go. Uh, how, however, this is supposed to be, if this isn't it, then something even more amazing is going to come. The 28th of February, another offer from the same company came through matching him and we were good to go. So I went to back to this house. It's gone. He's not even responding to me anymore. Fast forward. I make a post, somebody sees the post, somebody else comments on the post. I come to see the place that we're at now and I take it. Now, externally, this is not the home that I would choose. There's no fireplace. There's no gas stove. There's no river running through the backyard. Like the house is ugly on the outside. Like there's all of these things. And yet it literally could not be more perfect for us. The landlords are amazing. There's five acres of trees. They are like doing custom work for us inside of here. He built me the most, he, this beautiful island in the middle of the kitchen. Like, I mean, I, if you'd have laid them side by side, myself would have chosen the other house. Giving it up to God, choosing that was so much better. So that's really, that's the fruit born out of seven, eight years of trust and surrender. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful example on, on so many levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, on a, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball or <laughs> there's a few sort of clairvoyant people that I'd love to know their opinions and just, Again, when I was thinking about this morning, it's like, I want to ask Jill, what the hell is going on? Like, what do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What sort of, what sort of, there's obviously a shift happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, what, what, what do you see happening? Yeah. You know, in this, as, as it is with everything, there's so many directions we could go in this conversation. So I'll yeah. try to like <laughs> keep it as an overview of what I think is happening. Um, mm. First of all, I want to say that there is no going back. We're, we are not, we're at a, an evolutionary point, uh, planetarily, with humanity, vibrationally, spiritually. There's no, if you try to turn around and run the other backwards where you came from after this, you are going to hit the hardest brick wall. We cannot, we will be stripped of everything if we attempt to try to go back. Um, you know, it's almost like, um, <clears throat> it's like, it, it's like we've ran all of this distance and as we run this direction, the earth has fallen away on that side and you will fall off the edge of the cliff if you go backwards. So, <clears throat> and I think that's happening on all levels for humanity in the way of, um, choosing people have, are, are facing choice right now like nobody's business either line up with what you're meant to do here or you will suffer i use this analogy of like if we think about the entirety of humanity as one body like one physical body and for a very long time people have been getting away even though they were born to be a foot, they've been getting away with acting like a hand. So everything has been discombobulated and for some, somehow there's been all of this grace allowing us and hoping and praying and holding space that if you're a nose, you'll get back on the face instead of on the knee, you know? So at this point, People have this space right now to figure out what part of the body they actually are. 
And for all of us then to honor the, those parts, to honor that, you know, to not, to stop trying to make people be something they're not. So this is the, in order for us to actually line up with the vibrational existence that the planet is now already in, which is far beyond us right now. We have got to come into alignment in that way or we'll suffer. So I think that that's a big part of it. Um, and I think the planet is basically said, I've had enough of you people. <laughs> I love you and I'll love you forever, but I need a break. <laughs> so y'all can go sit in your house for a while while I grow myself back. <laughs> it's kind of like sending a child into the corner to yes. for a time out. Yeah. <laughs> think about what you've been doing here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then I think, you know, I, I feel that, um, you know, on the, on the wider scope that um, uh, I think, I, I think maybe just, I might leave it just at, again, coming back to that, we can't go backwards. There's no, there's no choice. Um, we are, we, we must begin to stand up and stand in and, and speak for those that cannot there there's got to be a more of a leaning in of uh justice and righting the wrongs and um coming together as a whole and remembering where we come from um so yeah i think there's a lot going on it's making me think and you're one of the people i know who's done this like there's people who have done the work you know and they know like i think you can you someone like you can lead the way like you, you've done the work and now for you, there's areas of your life that there's absolutely no going back, right? You have to continue <laughs> to live in trust and surrender or whatever other yeah. example you want to use, but there's just, there's, just knowing, there's just no going back. And maybe the re reminder is that, um, or how you can help people is that it's going to be okay. Like, you know, just stay the, stay the course. You're going to be, you're going to be all right. Yeah, and in the bigger picture, I, we are going to be all right. And yeah. it's going to be painful sometimes. Like, the, it just, the, you know, I, I, I don't want to give the illusion that everything's going to be rosy on the other side of us. It's not. We're, we're not on the other side. <laughs> we, are, we are in the thick of it. So, you know, there will be literal, figurative, spiritual deaths happening in great numbers for a while because this is what it's about. And where we are always gonna be okay is on the vaster soul level of things. You know, we are, this really is a calling. This is a calling forward of what do you wanna use this, this like split second of a life? How do you wanna contribute to the whole? How do you wanna contribute to the evolution of the soul's life? So, yeah. Yeah, one of one of my more powerful epiphanies in life was, um, and you know, Christ was in the picture. It was you're you're gonna be you are okay, and you're going to be okay, and that's one of the things that grounds me. You know, like yes. I often feel like I'm not okay on on several different levels. You know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a, it's a wonderful reassurance that we're gonna on a soul level we're gonna be okay. You know, and it, mm -hmm. it, it, it really does help. Maybe in the, in the midst of the storm, it sure doesn't seem like it, but yep. um, yeah, yeah, we're going to be okay. So mm -hmm. maybe that's... And, and just to say, I mean, and you said about that I've done the work and I have done work. I've, I've done a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the thing about doing the work is that you discover that you're going to always be doing the work. <laughs> there's no, there's no end game here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It gets a little tiring sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> I know what you, you know mean. what I found has helped with that, Rod, a lot. Yeah. This is an epiphany. Maybe I think you will resonate deeply with this that came from me the other yeah. a little while ago was that every time I try to do it, I get exhausted. That every time that I just open myself as fully as possible and let the divine do it, there's ease. And, you know, it doesn't mean that I don't need my physical body to rest and all of those things, but it's, it's like 
my entire job is to remove as much resistance as possible. And the rest the divine takes care of. Yeah, I like it. It reminds me of the recovery saying, let go and let God. Like, I'm pretty good at letting go, but I'm not, I'm not very good at letting God. I always, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get reminded by, of that frequently, often by people who really have let go and let God. It's like, wow, like, yeah, it's really yeah. working for you. <laughs> How, how can I've been at this on my entire life? How come I keep forgetting that part of it? Because <laughs> you're very human. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've been asking everybody that I've talked to lately these three questions, and they came up. My brother asked these of our family. We had an amazing family discussion one Sunday, mm. and uh, we all he asked us all to answer these questions. And um, we've been getting together every Sunday on my on my side of the family and then we sometimes get to get on zoom and then get together with our kids afterwards and wow um, yeah the discussions have been have been great it's kind of like you know at family gatherings sometimes people are all over the place right <laughs> but on zoom we're like right there so <laughs> it's like right. a, you'd appreciate it it's like a big coaching session mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so the first question is either business or personally like what during this time like you say, it's not not a super change for you, but maybe just recently, what have you found that you've had to let go of? Hmm. Hmm. I've had to let go of the idea that somehow I can keep existing the way I did before. Hmm. That it's that there's that there's anything that I can hold on to and call normal. <laughs> <laughs> there's no such thing anymore <laughs> yeah so for you it sounds like it's been a time of just letting go even more like just yeah, yeah. deeper not, surrender yeah deeper for surrender sure. yeah mm-hmm. excellent yeah i've heard other people say that mm. as well yeah yeah for sure what are you waiting for like what sort of what's What's the liminal, describe the liminal space for you right now. Is there anything in your life that you're just sort of waiting to happen? Um, I don't know that there is, to be totally honest. I'm not sure that I would, what am I waiting for? I don't know. Every time that I try, every time that I go into that space of waiting for something, uh, it doesn't go well. 